Common voltage graphs, also known as IV graphs. By the end of the video, you'll be able to draw current voltage graphs for fixed resistors, also known as ohmic resistors, bulbs, also known as filament lamps, and diodes. You'll also be able to explain how current varies with voltage for fixed resistors, bulbs, and diodes and know how this relates to their resistance. Basically, you need to memorize three current voltage graphs. The current voltage graphs for a fixed resistor, otherwise known as an ohmic resistor, because it obeys Ohm's law. The current voltage graph for a bulb, also known as a filament lamp, and the current voltage graph for a diode. Every person has their own unique fingerprint. Well, Every electrical component has their own unique shaped current voltage graph. The three graphs look totally different, which is great, because that means they're easy to tell apart. I like my students to understand why the shape is the way it is, because then they can understand more about the actual component. Let me explain some general information about current voltage graphs first, then I can use that basic understanding to explain the three graphs. The first thing to understand is that they're called current voltage graphs, which means current goes up the side on the vertical y-axis and voltage goes along the bottom on the horizontal x-axis. I explain to my students that whatever word you say first goes on the y-axis and whatever word you say second goes on the x-axis. For example, if I say a distance time graph, distance goes on the y-axis and time goes on the x-axis. Anyway, getting back on track. The Ohm's law equation is voltage equals current times by resistance. V equals I times by R. I like to rearrange it to find resistance. So, resistance R equals voltage V divided by current I. Remember that, because I'll come back to it in a minute. To work out the gradient of any graph, you always do the y-axis divided by the x-axis. So, in the case of a current voltage graph, that means the gradient is current divided by voltage, which is the opposite of voltage divided by current, which was the equation to calculate resistance that I just told you to remember. What that means is that the gradient and the resistance are inversely proportional, which means if one thing gets bigger, the other thing gets smaller. It's like they're opposites. So, if you've got a steep gradient or slope, that means you've only got a small resistance. And if you've got a gentle gradient or slope, that means you've got a big resistance. Right, let's apply that knowledge as we'll look at the three IV graphs one at a time. First, let's look at the IV graph for a fixed resistor. Now, the first thing you might notice is that the graph is a cross shape. That's because you need to know how the component behaves with negative current and voltage, as well as positive current and voltage. In other words, how the component behaves when the current is going in a forwards direction and in the reverse direction by reversing the battery. A fixed resistor behaves exactly the same in the forward and reverse directions. So the graph in the reverse negative direction is a mirror image of the forward positive direction. Notice that the slope or gradient is constant which means that the resistance is constant, or fixed, which is why we call it a fixed resistor. Now, not all fixed resistors have the same size resistance. Some fixed resistors have a small resistance, which means they have a steep constant slope. Remember, the steeper the slope, the smaller the resistance. And some fixed resistors have a big resistance, which means they have a flatter or more gentle constant slope. Remember, the flatter the slope, the bigger the resistance. 
Fixed resistors are what we we'll call ohmic resistors, which means that they obey Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the current through an ohmic resistor at a constant temperature is directly proportional to the potential difference or voltage across it. This means that the resistance remains constant as the current changes. We can tell the relationship between current and voltage is directly proportional because the graph is linear, which means a straight line and goes through the origin, zero, zero. The term directly proportional is best described by saying if one thing doubles, the other thing doubles. Or if one thing trebles, the other thing trebles. I've drawn a table containing data for you to look at. You can see as the voltage doubles from 1 volt to 2 volts, the corresponding current also doubles, going from 0.2 amps to 0.4 amps. And if the voltage trebles from, say, 2 volts to 6 volts, the corresponding current also trebles, going from 0.4 amps to 1.2 amps in this example. This is often asked about in GCSE physics exams, so pause the video and have a good look at the data in the table to make sure you understand. Now let's look at the IV graph for a filament lamp, otherwise known as a bulb, or as I like to call it, a spulb. Hey, I say it to me students. Let's all say it together. Spulb, spulb. I see it like this because it helps them to remember that it's an S shape, as you can see. Mind, it's only an S shape if the IV graph shows both the forward and reverse directions for current. Make sure you remember that, otherwise it's just a curve. Let's break the gradient down and make sense of what's happening. At first, the gradient or slope is very steep which means the resistance of the bulb is small. But then the slope gets flatter, which means the resistance has got bigger. Right, stand by your beds. I'm going to explain something important here. The reason the resistance increases is because as the voltage increases, the current increases. The increased current makes the bulb get hot which makes the bulb's resistance increase. Watch my video called Resistance to learn more. A bulb behaves exactly the same in the forward and reverse directions. So the graph in the reverse negative direction is a mirror image of the forward positive direction. The graph is a curve, so that means the relationship between voltage and current for a bulb is non-linear and therefore bulbs do not obey Ohm's law. Finally, let's look at the IV graph for a diode. In the forward direction, a current doesn't start to flow in the diode until the voltage gets to about 0.6 volts. I like to think it's a bit like the way you need to play with plasticine for a bit to warm it up before it starts to work properly. That's the analogy I like to use anyway. After 0.6 volts, the diode allows current to flow, but in a non-linear way as shown by the graph being curved. If you turn the power source around, so the current tries to flow in the reverse direction, the diode will not allow any current to flow. This is because diodes have a huge resistance in the reverse direction and a smaller resistance in the forward direction. That's how they're designed to work. They only let current flow in the forward direction. Well, I hope that video was useful. There will be plenty more videos to follow. Thanks for all your support. Subscribe to my channel, please, and bang that bell all over the place so you don't miss out on any of my new vids. Smash the like button. And apart from that, work hard, be nice, and bye for now.